we want to thank God for another exciting opportunity to gather at his feet and to receive. I want to thank Elder Nietzsche also for inviting me. And I want to thank all you guys for coming. Uh, we are treating, as I was told, we are treating the tenant of the church. I'm not sure how many you've treated before, but today we are going to do discussion. So, you know, if you have any questions, you can ask. I also ask questions as we go along. So before we start, I want to uh, ask, how many tenants do we have as a church? Anybody can, you know, Eleven. how many tenants? Eleven. Okay, uh, Eleven. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So I heard somebody say 10, and then somebody say 11. So we are all right. Before, you used to have 10 tenants. And just about two years ago, they added another one. So now we have 11 tenants. So when you say tenant, that is our core beliefs. So, okay. I want everybody to tell me one of them. Which one do you remember? What are some of the tenants, the 11 tenants that we have? Which one do you remember? God is omnipotent, omniscient, and omni. Okay, that's Jeremy, present. right? Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Oh my God. Is the wine healing one of them? Okay. So we, I believe you. Okay. So we believe in the the one true God. That is what you mean. In the so we believe in the one true God. We believe. In the existence of the one true God, Elohim, the maker of the whole universe, indefiable but revealed as triune Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that is what you meant. So yeah, we believe in one true God. Who else? What are some of the tenants? Yes, Nana. Nana, do you want to say something? It's something about the Bible. We believe in the Bible, yes, that's true. So believe, yes, who else? It's something about like marriage as well. Something about marriage. Okay, that's how we're gonna talk about it tonight. Yeah. We believe in marriage and what? So you guys, we I want you guys to take notes so that you know next time or when you are home, you can go through and make sure you understand what we are talking about. So we believe in marriage and family life. That is what we are going to talk about uh this evening. What else do we believe? In divine healing. Yeah, I think somebody said you believe in the Bible already. So what else? I think he mentioned divine healing, right? Oh, no, no. oh somebody said divine healing? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we do believe in divine healing. Yes. That's one of them. Uh, Elder, have you treated all the tenants? Yeah, we treated marriage, but the person wasn't able to go very deep, right? That's why I wanted you to take it again. Okay, but you've treated all the tenants, right, so far? Yeah, we've treated everything, yeah. Okay, so guys, you need to tell me more. We still have a lot mm -hmm. that you have to tell me. What are some of the tenants? Yes. Yes, if, guys? If, if, if you are shy to speak, you can write in the chat box. Offering. What's that? Tithes yes, we believe offering. in tithe and offering. Yes, that's one of them. That's good. We believe in tithe and offering. Yes. What do you say, like God and like um, like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as well? The, yes, we believe in baptism, gift, and fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm, mm. So we believe that you know, when you are saved, we need to baptize you by immersion, and then we also believe that the Holy Spirit has to baptize you. So mm. we call it baptism, gift, and fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Yes. What else do you believe? We are almost there. <laughs> okay. So because of the time, let me just quickly run through and then. Mm. So we have eleven ten, and as you, you guys said, the number one, we believe in the Bible. Number two, we believe in the one true God. Number three, we believe in man's depraved nature. Okay, when we see man's depraved nature, we believe that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God and are subject to eternal punishment and need repentance and regeneration. So we believe in that. We believe in the Savior because all men have sinned. There was a Savior, and as all oh, there is a Savior, so we believe in the Savior. That is one tenant of the church. We believe in repentance 
regeneration, justification, and sanctification. So we can say repentance, justification, and sanctification. We believe in the sacrament of baptism and the Lord's Supper. That is why we go to Lord's Supper every month. We believe in baptism, gifts, and fruit of the Holy Spirit. We believe in divine healing. We believe in tithe and offering. We believe in the second coming and the next life. So we believe that when you die, that is not the end. There is another life. And then we believe in marriage and family. That is the new one that they've added to it. And that is what we're going to treat tonight. So make sure you remember this one. Every Church of Pentecost member is supposed to remember it by heart. Even if you are sleeping and I woke you up, hey, what do you think about that? What do you know about the time? And you, you are supposed to be able to tell me. It is very important. So guys, let's make sure that you know we learn them. So tonight we are going to talk briefly about marriage and family. When we say marriage and family, what do we mean? When I say we, I mean the church, Church of Pentecost. So I'm going to read what is there. What if we believe in the institution of marriage as a union established and ordained by God for the lifelong intimate relationship between a man as husband and a woman as wife, as biologically defined at birth. Make sure you understand biologically defined at birth. I'm going to ask you a question on that. We believe that God instituted marriage primarily for mutual help, fellowship, and comfort that one ought to have for other and for honorable procreation of children and, and their training in love, obedience to the Lord, and responsible citizenship. So we are going to read something from Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and then from verse 21 to 25. So guys, grab your Bibles, your tablet, and let's read some scripture here. So who can read Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 for me? Somebody should read Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and the other person will read from 21 to 25. So guys, we are all learning together, okay? I'm not, I'm not preaching, we are all learning together. So somebody should open Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 for me. Yes. Yeah, Jeremy, okay, let's go. Then the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. So I'll make a helper who is just right for him. The Lord... For, for... Okay, can you continue from 21 to 25 for me? So, so the Lord to... caused mm -hmm. man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord took one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then God made a woman from the word. He brought her to man. At least the man exclaimed, This is this one is bone from my fish bone and flesh from my flesh. She'll be called woman because she is taken she was taken from the man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. Okay, thank you so much, Jeremy. Okay, guys, so when I was reading, if you paid attention, I said that we believe that in the decision of marriage as a woman and established and ordained by God for lifelong intimate relationship between a man as husband, and a woman as a wife, as biologically defined at birth. Why do you think they put that one there, biologically defined at birth? Why do you think they put it there? I want you guys to think about it and then you know, let's discuss it. So they say, we believe in the institution of marriage as a union established and ordained by God for the lifelong intimate relationship between a man as husband and a woman as wife, as biologically defined at birth. Why do you think they put that phrase there? Who can tell me that? Yes, let's not be silent. Yes, guys. You can write in the chat box <laughs> guys. if you are shy to speak. Yes. Wait, what's the question again? Okay. So, uh, I'm going to read it and then just pay attention, okay? So, they say we believe in the institution of marriage 
as a union established and ordained by God for the lifelong intimate relationship between a man as husband, right? That's number one. And a woman as wife, as biologically defined at birth. So my question is, why do you think they put bi as biologically defined at, at birth? What, that's the question. Why do you think they put that phrase there? there? So we believe, you know, we all know that in order for marriage to be complete, you need a man and a woman. They come together, they get married, and then, you know, we have husband and wife. But why did, why was there a need to put biologically defined at birth over there? Because, um... Can somebody think? Okay, Jeremy, yes? Because God took one rib from the man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, who else? Guys, I want you to think outside the box. This is very important phrase that they put in the over there. You need to understand why they put it over there. So that because you are a church member, if somebody asks you, you should be able to explain it. So I want you to understand it. I don't want to rush today. I want to make sure we all understand it before we move on. Okay. We all know how many genders we have, right? We all know that we have, like when you are two. born, you're either a boy or a girl. That's right. Two. So when you are born, you're either a boy or you're a girl. So you grow up, you're a man or you're a woman. So when you, are, when you grow up, a man see a woman and they say, okay, I want to get, you know, we want to get married, they get married. But now we see that if you do a lot of research now, they are saying that you have more than two genders right so somebody can say that okay i don't feel like you know i am a man so they will go and do some processes and this okay from today go going i am not a man i am a woman he was born a man he was born when he was born he was a boy you know but now he say okay i'm not a woman so they go through some processes and then instead of being a man he say okay now i am a woman now we are saying that if god made you a man you're a man <laughs> you can't change that if god made you a woman you're a woman you can't change that so if you say that okay i don't feel like i'm a man and you go through some processes and you feel like now you're a woman and you go and get see some man and then you bring that man and say say okay i want to get married to this man the church is not going to accept that mm -hmm. why because biologically you were born as a man biologically you were born as a woman you can't change you know your gender you can't change who you are so if you go through some, you know, medical process and change your gender, what the church is saying that we don't accept that because that is not how God created you. Guys, do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that is the church's position. Now let's go to the scripture that we read. According to the Genesis that we read, we need to learn one or two things from here. Now, the Bible says that first God created Adam. You know, there was no Eve. God created Adam. And he made all the animals. So the Bible says that God brought the animals that he had formed for Adam to name them. To see how Adam will call them. But when they came, there were two, two, right? So you see a bed, you know, two. A goat, two sheep. All the animals were two, two. You know mm -hmm. that where they had their image, but Adam was alone. So God saw that, no, Adam is alone. That's why the God said that it is no good for the man to be alone. So I will make a helper suitable for him. So God knew that, no, it is no, no good for Adam to live alone. So what God is saying that is it is no good for a man to live alone. That is why, you know, when you are young, you don't live alone, right? You live with your parents. I'm assuming that all of you guys are living with your parents. For me, I am a grown-up, so I live with my wife and my children. So God said, that no, it is no good for a man to be alone, so I'll make him a helper. So God made a woman. What is the name of the woman that God made or God created? Wife. Eve. Yes. So Eve and then Adam said, okay. This is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. I'm going to call her 
a woman. So she became Adam's wife. Now, God's intention is that when you get married, you are supposed to stay forever until God calls one of you home, right? So that is how marriage came about. But we all know that sometimes things happen. You know, we get married and along the line, some people divorce. That is why if you read Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 6, that again, let me read quickly. Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 6, some Pharisees came to him. They came to Jesus to test him. They asked, it is lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any, every reason, that is Matthew chapter 19, verse 3. Now, let me continue. Now, the question is, why are they asking Jesus that? If you guys, I want you to take notes. When I finish and you have any question, then you can ask me because today we are doing Bible study. I want to take a little bit of time to teach. Okay. The reason why they are asking is that if you go back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. It says that if a man marries a woman who becomes displeasing to him because he finds something indecent about her and he writes her a certificate of divorce, gives it to her and send her from his house. So what it is there is that if I get married to my wife and I find out that, okay, there is something about my wife that I don't like. I don't like my wife cooking. You know, I don't like doing my wife dresses. All I needed to do is to write a certificate, give it to my wife and then that's it. I divorce her. That was the. And so the Pharisees came and then they asked Jesus Christ because Jesus was teaching them to say that man and woman, when they get married, they are supposed to live together for life until they do them part. So the Pharisees wanted to tell Jesus. And then they came and asked Jesus that knowing what Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1 had said. So let's continue to see what Jesus said. So Jesus said, according to verse 4, having to read, he replied, that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female, as you read in uh, Genesis, and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. What God has joined together, let no one separate. So guys, all that we are talking about today is that when you guys, you know, as you guys are growing up. I'm very sorry, Elder. Please, okay. what was the Bible verse again? Oh, the Matthew one. Okay. Let Matthew me give you the scriptures. So you read it, Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 6. Matthew 19, verse 3 to 6. Yes, okay. verse 3 to 6. And then I chip in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So, guys, the Algis says this question based on their knowledge or what they know from the Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. And then Jesus wanted them to know that, okay, when you get married, you can't just send your wife away according to what is in the Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. So, Jesus was saying that Moses gave them that law, that liberty, because the people were stubborn. They were doing things that were not ordained by God. So Moses gave them that. But Jesus is saying that now you can't just divorce your wife. You can't just divorce your husband. You, once you get married, you, are, you have to stay together. You have to make sure that the marriage works unless it is you know, marital unfaithfulness. One goes and cheat or something. We, we will talk about that. So guys, as you are growing up, very soon you are growing up, you will finish school. You're going to get a job. Once you get a job, you're going to settle down. We expect you to get married. Your parents expect you to get married. God expects you to get married. Because remember, God said it is not good for a man to live alone. It is not good for a woman to live alone. So once, when you grow up, you finish school, and you get to work and you settle down, you need to make sure that you get married. Make sure it is part of your plans. I know you are not there yet. But that is, this is what the church believes. So when you get married, you can't just say that, okay, I know, I don't like the way my wife dresses. I don't like the way my husband is, you know, the way my husband eats and all that. So, you know, I just want divorce. It doesn't work that way. Once you get married, you stay in the marriage. You have to make sure. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a work, right? So once you get married, you have to make sure that 
it works. I am going to give you my last scripture and then we go to questions. If you have any question, we can go ahead and discuss it. So if I read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, I want somebody to read for me and let us discuss it. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Yes, who want to read it for us? So in other words, Elder, you are trying to say God doesn't like divorce, right? No. No, that's what, that, in fact, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, no, you can't just divorce. The only, okay, let me, let me add Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Well, what's up? Matthew, yeah, hello, somebody want to speak? What are we reading from? Okay, I'm reading Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. So when I finish that, then we go to the first Corinthians I wanted to show it. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, this is Jesus. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another woman, commit adultery. So what is Jesus saying? What Jesus is saying is that once you get married, you can't just divorce your wife. You can't just divorce your husband. Unless your partner go and cheat. If the partner go and cheat, then you are at liberty to divorce that person. Or he, Jesus even said that even if you still want your partner, you can still add, you know, you can still take your partner back. But at least this is the only place that it gives us, you know, some wiggle room that okay, if you want to divorce, this is the only reason why you can divorce your partner. Other than that, there is no other reason why you will say, okay, I don't like my wife, I don't like my my, my husband, so I'm divorcing. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's read. A first, I want somebody to read First Corinthians chapter seven, verse one and two. And let's learn something from there. Twenty-two. Yes, chapter seven, verse one and two. First Corinthians. Okay. So, it says, Isachar had four sons. They were Tola, Hua. No, guys, we're reading First oh. Corinthians. Chapter 7, verse 1 and 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nana, you thought this was Chronicles, right? <laughs> yes, he's reading it from Old Testament. <laughs> okay. So when you are there, then you can read it for us. Okay, so it says, you wrote to ask me about certain things mm -hmm. you say it it is a good thing when a man does not marry that may be true but then people may have sex in wrong ways so even so every man should have his own wife and every woman should have her own husband okay so here this is apostle paul people were asking him a lot of questions so he said that okay if you think you, you, you don't want to get married, that's fine. That's fine. You know, nobody's going to force you to get married. Even though G Jesus has said, that, God has said that it's not good for a man to live alone. I'll make him a helper. Apostle Paul is saying that, okay, if you think, okay, you want to serve God, so you don't want any, you know, because once you get married, you know, you have obligations and all that. But if you think, you know, you don't want to get married, you want to stay alone, that is fine. No, God is not going to judge you. God is not going to condemn you. But make sure that you stay alone. You are not going to have any sexual relationship with anybody. Because guess what? Once you do that, it is a sin. The only way that anyone can have sex is through marriage, right? Through your wife, through your husband. So if you don't want to get married, that is fine. But Apostle Paul is saying that it is not easy. Guys, it is not easy for a man to live, you know, until what? You are 70 years until, you know, you die, it is not easy for a woman to stay there until she dies. So because it is not easy, it is advisable that you get your wife. It is advisable that you get a husband so that you guys can live together. So it will not lead you into temptation. So marriage, guys, God ordained marriage. And you know, marriage is not something that was saying it's God ordained marriage. And marriage is for a husband and it's for a wife. So it's for a man and a woman. That is what the church believes. The church believes that, you know, once you grow up, once you, you know, you settle down, you need to get married so that God can bless you 
to the children, so that, you know, that's for procreation that the Bible is talking about. So, you know, get it and understand that it is God's intention that once you grow, once we settle down, we have to get married so that God can bless you. The Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from God. So marriage is not something that you can say, okay, I don't want to get married, so I'll just go. No, God says that it is no good for a man to live alone. That is why God made Adam. God made Adam so that, God made Eve so that Adam can marry Eve. So God instituted to that marriage so marriage is part of life so the church we believe that we believe that once you grow up once you settle down once you are okay you need to get married now i want to stop here because you know like i said this is a discussion so i want you guys to ask any question that you, you know you want what you don't understand if i said something that you don't really understand it i want to come out and the question so that we can all discuss it and make sure that we understand this because this is one of the tenants of the church so I, the line is open. If you have any question or contribution, just go ahead and shoot it. Yes, people. This is the about is um, divorce. This is about like divorce. Okay. Uh, you know, like um, men, ab men abusing women or women abusing women. Uh, what hmm. do you do about that? Thank you. Okay. So uh, remember, God, God, when when the, when you were reading it, remember what the Bible says. Let me guys, let me say something here for you. What the Bible says. So the Lord, uh, Genesis chapter two, verse twenty-five to twenty-five. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs, and then closed up the place with flesh. So what when we a woman is a rib from a man, right? So it's like me. Can you get, if you see a man who is abusing his uh, wife, what it means is that that person doesn't understand what the Bible talks about. He doesn't even understand that the woman is part of him. Because if I understand that the woman came from my, my rib, there is no way that I'm going to mortify the lady. There's no way that I'm going to meet. But this is the church's position. Okay. Even though we don't encourage divorce, but if you see that you're abusing your wife, that is why if you see that uh, your husband or your wife is abusing you, you have to take in the church leadership. The church will step in. We will make sure that, you know, you guys are separated. The church will, will try to and I'll talk to both of you to make sure that, you know, that thing stops. If that thing don't stop, then of course, we will not allow somebody to go and die because of marriage. The church will come in and make a decision. But before you make any decision, you have to make sure that you change it to the church leadership and they will come in with counseling to make sure that it works out. If it doesn't work out, then the church will you know, advise you on what to do. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay, Elder, I have a question. Elder, I have a okay. question. So, sure. Elder, so, um, you know, in Canada, right? Canada says that it is mm -hmm. right for a man and a man to marry, a man and a, a, a woman and a woman to marry, right? So, why right. are you saying that upon Canada giving us the right to do this? We should, marriage should just be between a man and a woman. Because Canada has allowed a man and a man to marry, a woman and a woman to marry. So why are you still saying that marriage should still be, be between a man and a woman alone? Yeah, that, that's a very important question. You see, that is why the leadership of the church added this one to the tenant, right? Because if this is the, this is the tenant, this is what is guided. This is what the church is using you know, as a guide. So we believe in what God is saying not what Canada is saying. Oh, okay. Mm. So what did the God say? God is saying that marriage is between a man and a woman. So this is the position of the church. And so if Canada is saying that okay, a man and a man can marry, and they come to the church, we are not going to do that. Why? Because it is a sin before God. God says that you know the only 
if you are a man, you can only have sex, you can only have intimate relationship with, with the, uh, the opposite sex. So the question is, why didn't God create another Adam that created Eve? Mm. Because God knows that, you know, you know, two men cannot get married, two men cannot get married. So the church's position is clear. No matter what Canada will say, no matter what the United States will say, we believe in what God said because God's word is the final authority. That is what we believe. And that is what the Bible says. So guys, understand that this is the church's position. This is what God says. So that is why mm. we have this as a tenant. So if somebody mm. go and bring, if you're a man and you go and bring a man and you say that, okay, Canada say a man can marry a man. So no, I'm bringing a man. This No, the church will say, no, no. And then you will, will give you the tenant that says that this is what we believe. And of course, you know, that's what the Bible says. God says, no, I will make him a suitable partner. And God made Eve a woman, not another man. So guys, understand that the fact that Canada is saying it doesn't make it uh, right. We believe that it is wrong. We believe that marriage should only be between a man and a woman. Amen. 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 Okay, another question, guys. So what happens if like uh, someone in the church mm -hmm. comes out and say they want to change their gender? Or marry man to man all the time. Yeah. That is why I asked the first question, right? You see, you see the way they phrase what I read? Let me read it again, okay? He said, we believe. When I say we, we mean the church. We believe in the institutions of marriage as a union established and ordained by God for lifelong intimate relationship between a man as husband and a woman as a wife. As biologically defined as them. So if you come here, Jeremy, if you come to the church and say, okay, uh, I feel like even though I am a boy or I'm a man, but I feel like, you know, I'm a woman. So I want to go and change my gender so I can opposite the opposite sex. The church will give you this. Okay, read it. What read you where? Saying? Read where? We will, give, we will give you the tenant that I just read. Right? Because the tenant read. is saying that, let me read it again for you. The tenant is saying that a man as a husband and a woman as a wife as biologically defined at birth. So when you were, you know, when your mom gave birth to you, were you a boy or a girl? That is what the church is going to, you know, act upon it. So you can't come and say that now that I'm 15 years, now that I'm 18 years, I'm going to change my gender. The church is not going to accept that. Oh. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So, like, all, what if all you guys are confused? So what if are the yeah, Jeremy, the, ask the question. When the when the church doesn't accept something, but you don't mm -hmm. uh, obey them, like do they like kick you out the church, or like what happens? What the church what the church would do was first to try to counsel you, right? To give you counsel, you will try to advise you, try to pray with you, try to give you counsel. But if you still think that you know that is what you want to do, of course you you know the church cannot force you to do something but the, there is no way that the church is going to allow you to come and you know bring opposite uh, a partner and say, say and say that we are, i'm going to get married let's say i am a boy right i said okay i feel like you know i'm a woman so you know i'm going to well, somebody medical processes and then i come back and i say okay now my name is no more you know my name is uh, jennifer so i want to get married to no the church is not going to accept that because you were mm -hmm. born a boy Mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying mm -hmm. to say so we have the tenant that is why i'm saying that make sure you understand the tenant of the church because you have the tenant if you if you take the you know some people can take the church to court right they say okay no i want to do this the church is saying no so you will take this to court, court and then give them okay this is our tenant read it in the court will read it and say okay no i'm sorry that is the tenant so they can't you know, go you know and do anything outside the tenant of the church so it is very important that you know we understand the tenant of the church so that it will guide them whatever we do in the future okay guys all right please i have a i, I want to add a, a, a contribution so with what okay, sure. that just beautifully said right god in his own wisdom you know god in his own wisdom decided that a man should live with a woman not a man should live with a man right that's why god didn't create adam and steve God created Adam and who? Eve. 
right? So in a way, if you as a human being decide to say that I will follow what God says, I will do my own thing, then you are trying to tell God that God is stupid or God is not wise. You see, that's why God is very angry when people behave like that because in his own wisdom, he created us and he knows that a man should live with what? A woman, not a man with a man, not a woman with a woman. So if any human being decides to go against this rule or this law of God and do otherwise by a man marrying a man or a woman marrying a woman, what they are trying to tell God that God is stupid or God is not wise. That's why he decided to do that in the first place. So I hope you understand, right? That's the little contribution. I hope you all understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for the contribution. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Tio, um, so guys, I think our time is almost up. Okay, okay. Tio, okay. Tio asked a question What do you do if your wife or husband sleep with another man or woman? <laughs> yes, okay. Tio, that is all you read in Gen uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Okay, so and, uh, I'm gonna read it again. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, he said, I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife is set for sexual immorality. So that is where the, your question is coming in. Mm -hmm. So if your husband go and sleep with another wife, that is sexual immorality. Or if your wife, vice versa, that is sexual The Bible says that at that point, you, you are at a liberty to divorce that person if you so wish. But of course, if you want to, you know, you can, you know, the leadership of the church or, you know, we can talk to the other partner if you still love the person. And then you can come together. The person can, you know, people make mistakes, right? You all make mistakes. So you can, you know, we can advise the person. We can counsel the person. We can pray with the person. The person can change if you want. If you want, you can still marry the person. But of course, if you don't want, you can divorce that person and, and you are free. The church cannot do anything about it. And I don't think God, God is not going to judge you based on that. Because, you know, the other person was unfaithful. Okay, Tio? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what time do you close? Nine o'clock, right? No, I said nine fifteen. So you can. Oh, no, okay. So that's fine. So okay, guys. So if you have any question, you can. You still have some some time. Okay, Ask. I think um, Nana made a contribution. Anything. Nana made a contribution okay. that they disrespect they disrespected God by making their flag a rainbow. God's promise, which is what he didn't want. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good contribution. Thank you, Dana. Please, Elder, I have another question. So if in case my okay, classmate Elder. comes, right, and tells me that mm -hmm. he wants to change his gender because that's how he, he was born that way, how can I explain to that person from the word of God that he was not born that way? Yeah. So you have to let that person know that God... Initial God created Adam, a man, right? And then later God created a woman out of Adam. Like Edda beautiful said, God did not create Steve or God did not create another man. God in his own wisdom created a man and a woman. God is a very wise person. God is a God is God is not stupid. He knows that you are going to function very well as a man. He knows that you're going to function very well as a woman. So if you come and you try to change your gender, what you are saying is that God did not mm. make you, or God didn't know what he was doing when he was creating mm. me. Mm. But guys, God has never made a single mistake. God never makes mistake. God, so we can see here, we can see what is now. We don't know what is going to happen in the next 10, 15 years. God knows that. God knows that you're going to function well as a woman, as a boy, as a girl. That is why he made you that way. So if mm. you try to change your gender, what you tell God is that God, you, you are stupid. God, you didn't know what you were doing. Why did you create me that way? It, it's an insult to God. So what you should advise that person is that, no, you should seek counsel. You know, you can talk to your pastor. We can pray. You know, prayer can change. Because guess what? Sometimes the devil try to do all these things to manipulate, to change people's destiny. Mm. Because mm. devils know what you're going to do in future, right? So you want to find a way to, you know, divert your attention to change your destiny. That is why you need to pray to make sure that what God has for you will come to pass. So guys, if your friend comes to you and say this, then make sure that, that tell the person, okay, can I talk to my pastor about it? 
So you can talk to any of the elders or your pastor, and then we will give that person counsel, we we'll pray with that person, and then we believe that God is going to do it. Amen. 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 I love one thing Elder said. He said at times Satan can manipulate people, right? Because mm -hmm. it is not usual that someone is a man and he will think he's a woman. So he has to change. You should know that it's a Satan who is deceiving the person to think that way. So that means the person is under demonic manipulation too. And the person might need prayers, right? That's why we should remember one another in prayers. Amen. Thank you so right. much. Very important. That. Thank yeah. you so much. Wait, I have a question. What happens if, like, let's say you want a divorce for, like, other another reason other for a reason other than uh cheating or um abuse like maybe it's like an argument maybe gone to like some type of like argument like stuff and the relationship is more toxic okay so this is jeremy right yes okay so jeremy you remember what jesus said he said they came to jesus right let let us let us read the Bible again because no matter I want the scripture to you know talk for us. Let's read Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to see that we read again. And then I will chip in the Deuteronomy. So Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to says, the Bible said that some Pharisees came to him to test him. They came to him to do what? To test him. They came to Jesus. So they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Mean something like, okay, maybe they don't agree on certain things, they are always fighting, they're always firing. So can they divorce? <laughs> and then Jesus is saying this, okay. That's verse 3. Let's jump to verse 4. Jesus said, having to read, he replied that at the beginning, the creator, that is God, made them made and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate it. So mm -hmm. if God put together, let no one separate. You can't say that, okay, I, you know, I don't agree with my wife for so many things. Because of that, you know, I think I'm going to divorce my wife. The Jesus is saying that, no, that will not cut. So that's why Jesus is saying that the only reason that you can divorce your partner is, you know, when the person is unfaithful. So the Deuteronomy chapter, the Deuteronomy that we read, that is what was there. You know, they were practicing it. Okay, if I get married, and I ask my wife to cook for me, and he doesn't cook the way I like it, I just, you know, divorce, you know, my wife. You know, if I don't like the way my wife is dressing, I just divorce. So, according to the Trinum chapter 24, verse 1, but Jesus came and said, no, no, you can't just divorce your wife or, you know, or your, or your husband just because, you know, you, you are always fighting or you don't agree with him, you don't agree with her. No, you don't have that right. You are not at liberty to divorce that person. Once you get married, no one should put a sender. You are not supposed to divorce him. Mm. You no, know, she's not supposed. The only reason why you can do that is a certain merit, you no know, marital unfaithfulness. Okay, guys? Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Do you have another question before we wrap up? So, guys, let, let me say this. That is why, you know, when you're going to get married, you have to make sure that you pray. You really have to pray. You have to make sure that you pray very well. You have to make sure that God directs you. Because guess what? You can't just go and get married and then the, the, the next month you come and say, okay, I think we are not compatible, so I want to get divorced. No, it doesn't work that way. Once we bless you, once you get married, the Bible says that no one should put a sender. So, you know, you are staying in the marriage. So you have to make sure that before you get married, and all the Holy Spirit lead you. That is why you have Holy Spirit, right? Make sure that the Holy Spirit will lead you. Make sure that you pray. You get time to pray. You've got to pray. You don't just go and say, okay, you know, she's beautiful, so I'm going to marry her. You know, he's handsome, so I'm going to marry him. No, mm -hmm. no. You have to make sure that you understand what you're doing. You have to make sure that you love the person. You have to make sure that you are compatible. You have to make sure that the Spirit is leading you. And believe me, if the Spirit leads you and you go, and you will enjoy your marriage. Amen. Okay, guys. Amen. Man. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Do you have any other question? Otherwise, I will hand over to Elder. Mm -hmm. Elder, can okay, you pray for us before you go? 
Okay. <laughs> okay, guys, let's pray. First of all, all of us to open our mouth and thank God uh, for his teaching today. The Bible says that his words shall never attend to him, yes, boy, unless it's accomplished the purpose in which it was sent. There is a reason why.